change is a part of life. But many of us, including myself, we don't like change. It threatens us, for it creates uncertainty and challenges to our sense of security. In any change, there is always loss and grief to deal with. We struggle with feelings of emptiness. As our children grow up and become more independent, Sometimes it is emotionally challenging to adjust to the changing roles of our intimate partner relationship. We grieve and even feel disoriented when those we love are taken away through death or separation. Dismissal from a job, eviction from a home, even losing a set of home keys, change can be painful for it upsets the natural movement and the rhythm in our lives. Some of the changes we have experienced as modern people have been so exciting, but it also have left us uncertain where we are going in this world. We have developed the best technology we can by putting people on the moon and sending a perseverance to Mars, providing artificial hearts and hips and kidneys, as well as stem cell research. But we cannot cope with the human problems of teenage pregnancy, drug abuse, or the unknown virus as we go through the entire year with the COVID virus. But also we cannot solve the problem with growing homeless population. As a nation, we experience the highest standard of living in the world. But for all our wealth and our power, we have not managed to create a safer world. The rise of hate crimes and gun violence, the threat of a nuclear holocaust, perhaps is just a click away. As Americans, we have an enormous work resources and force, an unbelievable space to expand and some of the most brilliant minds in the world. But we are still plagued by unemployment, crowded cities, an educational system which sometimes produces the undermotivated and illiterate student. We have inherited histories and faiths as a nation of races. But we have implored the righteous name of God and name of Allah to justify our territorial rights and violence by raising of holy wars against each other. What is demanded of us in the midst of disruptions and change and the cries of the world, we just cannot and stop remain silence. And so we shout in the public arena, stop, please stop. Enough is enough. But we feel hopeless to turn a great tide of events which surround us every day. In a time when the big box of only a few create a mega conglomerates and gentrification and mass poverty on a world level. We are asked to give away and share what we have to follow a simple request from a Jewish carpenter. In a land where bigger and more is better, for example, bigger cars, bigger homes, 
bigger condos, bigger boats, a bigger investment, and more returns. We are called to have a faith, the authentic faith, even with the size of a grain of mustard seed. We are asked to take off our pretense and put on the simple cloth of faith and courage. In a generation, in a generation where drugs are killing our youth and young adults, and where paranoia and the program threatens our unity as people, we are asked to be compassionate and caring, to live without fear, allowing our love to heal our disease on all different levels. It is one thing to respond to the natural rhythms and changes of the world. It is quite another to feel overwhelmed by the tide of popular values and pervasive opinions. Even through we are in this world, we are called to live apart in a world which is manic with change. We are asked to be a people of compassion and love and hope. We must keep before us that we are not shaped by the world around us, but we are called out of God's mercy to shape and change this world so that we can make this world a little bit of better place to live together. You know, you and I are not helpless victims of our circumstances and changes, but we are set apart to create and to change the world we live in. We are asked to, to draw upon the power of God within us to seek a higher power than the power than the power around us. We are asked to, to steady ourselves on the everlasting arms of God and to conform to the demands of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are commanded to live a life differently, to open ourselves to the transforming power of God in Jesus Christ. Before the pandemic, I sometimes see a voice from one academy playing with a transformer. With a few tweaks and tastes and turns, they turn a fire truck into a, ro a robot and back again without any much effort at all. And this miraculous toy can change from one form to another without any seemingly any pain. And this would make that sometimes change could be so easy for us. But however, the change and transformation that we must do it takes a lot more than a few twists and turns. And nonetheless, that is exactly what we are asked to do, to be changed and transformed inwardly by a complete renewal of our mind and our heart. The very essence of our being must change so that we may reflect the will and love of God in our lives. This is the most radical change that we can ever undergo, for it challenges the very deep core of our being and the regions for our existence on this earth. To change in this way means a complete overhaul not just a few twists and turns, for we must open our lives to God in Christ, so we may be transformed into a new creature. What does this mean? To let God transform you and me. 
to be transformed by God means that we live a life dominated by the love of God in Jesus Christ. It also means that we must see ourselves as a one body celebrating our uniqueness and also different functions in unity and peace with one another. To be changed by God, it means that we must go beyond alienation and pain and mistrust into lives based on reconciliation, understanding, and forgiveness. It means that we live a life of sincere love and respect for one another and, the, and with also whole creation in a time when love and respects are considered sentimental or outdated. To be changed by God, it means that we create a life of meaning and purpose amidst a wasteland of trendy goals and popular secular opinions. It means that we rise above the racket of life and listen to the still small voice which is so deep within us. But we cannot do this alone or in isolation from each other. This transformed life is not a private deal between God and us. It must be lived out in a community of faith, such as in our common collective community life of PCIN. We must be changed open ourselves to the transforming power of God so that we can live in our families, in our community, and live on this earth and make a difference that only you and I can make. God's love is the transforming elements in our lives. God is like a great transformer in that the energy and the source of all love is in God and is from God. Love bears all things. Love believes in all things. This love hopes for all things. And this great love endures all things. Love overcomes our fears, our anxiety, and heals our grief and calms our hurting spirit. Transformed by this great love, we can use our lives to create community of love, even in the midst of change. Transformed by love, we learn how to live and how to love, and how to grow in faith and in with each other. Let us, let us be transformed by this love and the power of the living God. Let us be open to the future and for the new path that will be presented ahead of us, especially toward and after the end of the pandemic, facing with strength and courage. Let us listen for the voice of God, calming us and renewing us. Let us be open to the spirit of the living God that changes our hearts and mind and make it ever more true. Let us yield ourselves, our concerns and our goals, our aspiration and all that concerns us as a lump of clay before God so that God's creative hands and God's transformative spirit can melt us, mold us, and fill us and use us to be the instrument of God's love and so much needed peace and justice 
in this world. Let all God's people say, Amen.